Wakey Wake, smell those eggs and bake. It's time for Breakfast Talk, a podcast covering a range of entrepreneurial and independent comics creation topics first thing in the morning. Of course, please like and share if you're enjoying our special seasoning. And be sure to subscribe to join us every Monday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central. Let's talk. Yeah. Breakfast <laughs> out. Breakfast out. All right, there we go. Breakfast. Breakfast. <laughs> I have to change. I have to change like the view. I, be, I believe you. I'm a stapler. A stapler. Yeah, I, I told him if if, if right he takes my stapler, I'm gonna burn this place down. I told burn him. This place I'm gonna burn it. I'm gonna burn it. I'm gonna burn it. I'm gonna burn it down. Well, we are on it's episode. Off, what? That's why I have to use my phone. Sorry, no. I'm sorry. I'm not talking to you guys. I'm my bad. Fine. <laughs> I'm not talking to you, Greg. Damn. Yeah, shut up, Greg. Jesus. Oh, I but yeah, this is different. I, I, <laughs> I'm oh my bad. I thought we were doing something here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I have to use my phone, so it's definitely an adjustment here. On this, my internet is being real wacky. Real so wacky in and Chicago. Yeah, mm-hmm. in Chicago. Chicago. Uh, <laughs> episode this is, sixteen. This is episode sixteen of Breakfast Jerk. You know, <laughs> the old breakfast deck. Yeah, my guy, I have a heart attack. <laughs> what yeah, accent was that? You gotta Chris have Farley. a heart attack. It's the Chris Farley. <laughs> he, he needs some work on that one, buddy. Gonna have a heart attack. That that impression is is draining my energy. Yeah. <laughs> and that's Segway. what we're talking about. <laughs> Segway, like those things you ride in mall in mall cop. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um. To get yeah, you today, around. Today's topic is energy vamps. Uh, last episode, we basically talked about um, the people pleasing syndrome. So, this is more of like things you can't really avoid. Like, uh, you know, that person at work that is a narcissist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have the per- perfect person in mind. So, <clears throat> I won't name yeah. the name. <clears throat> I mean, their name. Um, <laughs> Yeah. His name? <laughs> so we know it's a dude. All right. We're getting <laughs> clues here. I won't name that six foot one and a half inch blonde haired <laughs> pale skin guy at work. <laughs> name right ri- name Bob. Yeah, name rhymes with Levin. <laughs> Mick Levin? Is that what you yeah, exactly. Yep, exactly. You don't even have a last name, it just says McLovin. <laughs> I am Mick Lovin. Um so uh, yeah. We want to thank Sean D N. I think I don't know what your actual last name is. Um, ever uh, you talked to me and I, I I just don't know your last name. Is uh, he an energy vamp? No. <laughs> um, he he uh, gave us this topic to talk about. So over what platform? Facebook um, or or I think it was Twitter. It was Facebook. That sounds more like a Twitter handle, yeah. <laughs> no, that's like his name on Facebook. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Well, on Twitter, it's Shinobi 8 bit or 8 bit Shinobi or something like that. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Got it's it. Pretty Got close. It. Kind of sounds like know. Know. He's Canadian. Got it. That has oh, yeah. I'll, no, none of the rules <laughs> the apply to Canadians. No, no. Eh? 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 Yeah, but, syrup, uh, eh? but uh, what was it? <laughs> Energy vamps. Yeah. Eh? So, we were talking about like last ep- the last episode about how um what is it like people that you actually care about and that kind of taking up your time and draining your energy but yeah like greg said the, the the real energy vamps are the ones that you can't really avoid and you have to figure out ways to either you know reduce the amount of you know <laughs> you know blood they suck from you or the uh you know the just be able to figure out how to adapt to you know that type of energy and I think in like a way earlier episode, we talked about like the energy buckets and like having different amounts of energy. And I, and I would say that definitely one of the ways to help deal with the amount of people that are the amount of people, places, things that are going to you know suck energy from you throughout the day is being able to like mentally separate them into those buckets. So even though they're going to take energy, they've only got a certain amount of energy they can take the oh, yeah. in that bucket. So like, I know for me going to the gym, 
can actually uh, drain me physically from doing other things, but it doesn't affect me mentally. So I used, you know, uh, when I was still working a day job, I used to work out in the morning because I knew when I was done with the, my day job, I was so mentally drained, I couldn't convince myself to go to the gym. Right. Right. But if I worked out before the gym, I still had the same amount of energy when I got home, but I had already worked out right after work. And so like, that's, that's something that, you know, I know I've used is like just being able to, you know, basically it's like, let the, let the vampire bite only one arm. Don't, don't let him go to the source, you know, have, yeah, you know, tourniquet, have to, put a tourniquet on the arm, you know, he's yeah, going to exactly. bite. <clears throat> yeah. That's, that's pretty much, um, I think that's the same strategy that I would, I would use is, uh, you know, <clears throat> when I was working, <laughs> uh, like a day job, um, it was definitely something that was like, if I know this person is really just going to like, um, like my first tact with people is to kind of be open, you know what I mean? To like, you know, let them, you know, say what they're going to say. And then, you know, I'll try to be as, um, cordial. yeah, exactly. And, and polite and all that kind of stuff, but also, you know, friendly. Like I do actually genuinely like want to get to know people, but, um, you know, when you start noticing those people that like, really feed off your reactions and like, just don't quit you know, when you give them those cues, like, okay, I have to move on to something else here. I can't stand and talk to you all day. I actually have a job to do kind of thing. Um, or just anything else. Like they really don't get those social cues. Like, Hey, it's time to end this conversation <laughs> or end this activity or whatever the case may be. Um, my tact would, yeah, would just be to really deliver that this mindset or, or only limit them to having this, this sort of interaction with me. Like, at a certain point, I'm not interested in anything that they're saying anymore. And I'm very clear that I'm not interested in what they're saying anymore. And, you, you know, at that point, the words that are coming out of my mouth. <laughs> and at that point, they do understand, you know, like, oh, OK, but but usually they'll take it negatively because obviously I'm not feeding into what they want to do. Right. So it's like that to me is like what you have to prepare for is like in the people pleasing aspect, you kind of have to take yourself out of that mindset of like this interaction is not going to go well. And you have to like plan for that, you know, like plan that they're going to be kind of pissed off because you're setting a boundary with them um so that, that would be somebody my who doesn't mind that conversation and you kind of go yeah greg's interested in this <laughs> right and just kind of slink away <clears throat> then I, I feel guilty about that though like if i do something like that i'm like i'm always like if i'm homer into the bushes you know like i always feel kind of guilty about leaving somebody in the crossfire <clears throat> Yeah. I think I would rather I would rather them just be pissed off and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's definitely something. I know when I was working my day job, there's a lot of people that, um, you know, in the morning, I'd, I'd go down to get coffee and I'd be like, "Oh, hey, how you doing?" And it's like, living the dream. And like, <laughs> like all I could think in my head was like, "Dude, there's a bus that passes by here every day. Just jump right in front of that bus." <laughs> like, like, dude, it like why would like why would you put that on me it's nine o'clock in the morning i'm in a good mood like you know if you fucking hate it that much like the day uh, hasn't started brother like you know you got some yeah, time yeah. uh to make it to that 10 a.m bus stop like so <laughs> but, but yeah like the one thing i actually was thinking about was that honestly it's not something that you want to do on a regular basis in the sense that you don't want to be known as a negative person but that's where commiseration actually can be a little beneficial if like, you know, if you have that friend at work and like there's some other guy that you know is the energy drain, like he's coming in every day, sapping it from you, it is okay to, you know, you know, talk to somebody and kind of be like, you know, like I said, like, you know, it's like, dude, like, I wish that guy would jump in front of a bus. Like just saying that out loud sometimes that all of a sudden, because it's so over exaggerated. Now yeah. I feel great. I got energy back because what I did was I switched buckets, right? You know, I, I'm, yeah. in, I'm in the social bucket mode while my other bucket replenishes itself after you yeah know, somebody emptied it <laughs> no and that's that's um that's one of the things too that like it's it's a tricky it's a tricky area too to like want to vent but not get so overly involved in that that like yeah like you said like you're coming off as like somebody who's bitchy all the time or complaining <laughs> it's just like you know i gotta have this five minutes of venting and then i'm done like you know what i mean like you have to learn how to cut it off a little bit i've done that with greg like numerous times uh, where I'm like, I gotta say something about this person that's in our group chat that's just being really freaking annoying, and I, like, you know, you kind of wow. have to be, you have to be person, you have to be like, you know, personable with them, in, in in the moment, but you know, you gotta vent a little bit to somebody who can kind of like hear it. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I think the the most interesting um, area of like energy vampires or the most challenging, I'd say, is probably like your family members when it comes to them, 
um, because, you know, we all have that one or two or however many family members that like 17. Yeah. However many, however many, look, however your family is, I'm not trying to judge. I'm just saying like, sometimes you, 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 you Mm -hmm. understand that they're just not on the same wavelength as you. And like you said, on the, on the same trajectory. And it's not that you're trying to be anything better than them or, you know, but that's how they take it is when you put up a boundary and you say, look, I'm devoting my time to this. They automatically take it as like offensive. And it's usually because again, like you were saying with the dude, you know, jumping in front of the bus thing, it's like, you're living an unfulfilled life. And I understand why you have that bitterness because you're not fulfilled, but that's not going to stop me from being fulfilled. And what I really have to cut I have to understand that like, you're not going to change your perspective on how you see our interaction. You're always going to see it as something I'm doing negatively towards you. And that's because of your perspective. It's not because that's what the truth is. That's, that's just how you're seeing it, you know, and perspective is reality. So that's your reality. Go ahead and live that reality. I'm going to live mine over here and, you know, Hey, come and join me on, on my side of the fence where we're just trying to be productive and not, you know, be upset or irritated by each other, simply pursuing positivity. Yeah, I was going to say one, one other thing on that too is uh, whether it's commiseration, which is external, right? The other thing too is like a lot of artistry comes from like bad emotions. And like that's, that's one thing. If you're, if you're trying to stay creative and you think your energy is drained, draw about the thing that's bothering you. Yeah. Just like writers. If you're a writer, write about the thing that's bothering you. <laughs> um, so, you know, like that, that's, that's a huge thing though. Like that, that can be the way that again, you switch buckets into creativity mode. And while you're doing that, you're actually refilling that bucket that was drained. And yeah. Like, that's a huge, huge way to do that. So there's a guy at my job. <laughs> <laughs> I actually said it on fr- Friday morning when I was leaving. Um, I had to go get tested because uh, everybody has to now at my job. But, he didn't um, wear safety protection. Uh, he <laughs> he had to go quarantine, so whatever, whatever, it's happening. Um, but it's not that that's annoying. Um, his overall personality is super annoying. <laughs> um, everything about everything about <laughs> you. Why are you the Why way are you that you are? You are? <laughs> Pow. So <clears throat> he was there Wednesday night last one what last week and it was him the guy that i always work with and then me i stay i feel like not not to interrupt you but i feel like we're learning a lot about your life greg the last two episodes yeah (laughs) we're getting some insight here it's a story (laughs) Story um so so. the one guy that i always work with he got trapped in the elevator he got like stuck in the elevator He's not the only one. Him and me are like part of an exclusive club there, um, getting stuck in the elevator. The elevator uh, club. All right. Yeah, it's um, powered by a hydraulic system. It's not like a cable machine. Uh, oh. Which both, I guess, suck because I've had to deal with both of getting stuck in elevators. Um, it's just a thing of me. Um, so this dude thinks he knows everything about everything. So he was in the room that I'm in and I uh stop doing my tour I, I was done and i came back into that room and he's just like sitting there watching youtube or whatever he was doing and uh i was like oh i just learned from mike that um we both could have almost died because of the elevator he's like no no there's safety precautions there we're not wrong. so mike <laughs> the guy that i work with every day he was like a little lower than the fifth floor and um the doors were not opened all the way. Like he was stuck. So he put his hands in and he was trying to like push the door open so he can like just jump out. So he did that. And I did the exact same thing like a month ago. Apparently if you do that, the elevator could cut you in half. (laughs) So I learned that. And then the guy's just like, he, he was talking to the facilities guy and the facility, the the facilities guy um, actually told him that he's like, Oh, and then he said to Mike, he's like, oh, I didn't know they were that bad. I'm like, it's an elevator. It's powered by a hydraulic system. Yes. It's yeah. not going to just be like, oh, yeah, like you guys are going to be fine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so he's just very draining um, mentally. I, 
if I ha- if I know I'm working with him, I already prepare myself of like, oh, so I'm just going to stare at the TV the entire time while he's talking. I'm going to bring a lot of ramen. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like, yeah, I was, story. <laughs> I was watching like, um, I was watching like Edward Scissorhands like a couple weeks ago. Nice. And even though I've seen it like a million times, if I've seen a movie and I'm still watching it, like, I, I just obviously I enjoy the movie, so I want to watch it. I don't want to hear your voice. Sleepy Hollow, the Tim Burton one. I forgot that was a thing. Yeah, I think it's on like Netflix. Or it's something. a good one. Um, and he was he. Anytime <laughs> you're watching a movie at, or anything, at any time you're watching like uh, let's say um, Emperor Scissorhands, <laughs> he will point out things that are not in reality, like that aren't real. And I'm like, yes, this is a movie. So um, sense. why does he have scissors on, on his hand? <laughs> so, How is he even cutting hair? This doesn't so, make any sense. <laughs> How does he use the scissors? <laughs> oh, that's not even a good movie example. The best movie example that's hilarious is last Christmas, around last Christmas last year, I was watching Die Hard. And it's a Christmas movie. Um, it is. Okay. So <laughs> I thought Hector's soul would get angry. He's like, like what? <laughs> so uh, um, he came, he was working because, you know, I have to be tortured. And he came into the room that I'm in and he's like just watching. He sits down like right next to me. And I'm like, why? There's so much room in here. And like, just go away. <laughs> Feeling I have boundaries too. Like I don't like being touched by most people. Uh, there's a bubble, and it's as large as your radius that your hands can. Uh, yeah, I don't like people touching. Whatever me. room I'm in, that's the size of the bubble. Yeah, <laughs> if if, <laughs> if I'm in the room that you're in, you should probably just leave. <laughs> so he. Who's he the said, narcissist again? <laughs> <laughs> no but <laughs> so he's he's um in there and if any movie you're watching he'll go on imdb or google or whatever he's doing and he's like oh yeah no that person is in this movie and i was like cool i don't i don't i don't, I don't care i'm watching this movie right now <clears throat> I, I was watching well so die hard i was watching die hard and he thinks he wants to be a cop He'll never become a cop because of his record. It, it's a thing. Mm-hmm. His reputation precedes him in, in a bad way. So he um, was like, oh, that's, I, that's not what I would do. I'm like, this is an action movie. This isn't reality. And he's like, and those yeah. explosions aren't even real. Actually, they are. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and but he's this, like, this what? Is- when and I was, was like, Die I watched Hard a documentary, made? and I know how Die Hard was made. I was going to say, when was Die Hard made? You didn't have CGI fire explosions no. back then. Like, you know. I'm like, no. I, I watched a thing on Netflix, uh, like how they were made or something, the movies. Um, and that was one of them. And the people around that neighborhood, that area, complained about the noise because they had to set off explosions and stuff at that building that they were using. So yeah. he's wrong right there. It was funny. He probably saw Michael Bay movies. He's like, "This is what a real explosion is like." <laughs> and real action too. Boom! Pow! <laughs> so yeah, all right. <laughs> so it was that, and um, just little things. Not little things. Things like that uh, are very annoying when it's coming out of his mouth, and he just keeps talking about things I don't care about, like. I was watching some other movie and he's like, Oh, did you watch a uh, deep blue sea? I was like, don't even know what that is. <laughs> you've never seen deep blue sea. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you've never seen deep blue sea. <laughs> and I'm like, no. For real, like, and then he was like, and he's like, I can't like remember three. what the about, but I know I've seen it. <laughs> Sam Jackson gets fucking eaten by a shark. I mean, Oh my god, yes, okay. All right, I remember it now. Yeah, that's all I needed to hear. He's the like, there's like there's like three of them. And then I was like, cool. I, I've just I never seen see them. Yeah. Yeah, there is, but the you know, it's it's it turns into a one is only straight good. up B movie after number like, one. You know? I do yeah. like B movies because he was like recommending that. That's why. Because I've watched some weird movies like on Amazon, like uh Ice Cream Man. That's a really weird movie. Um is that a horror movie? It's a horror movie, but it's the guy, you know, the guy ron howard's brother yeah he's the ice cream man and he's just a creep 
the movie. He looks really creepy. Yeah, yeah, he's very. He looks weird. real quick though. <laughs> Real quick, though, just to add this point before we move on to the next episode, there's actually a YouTube channel, um, and he, the the creator of the channel, he's a, he's an, uh, a licensed th- like counselor and therapist, and he has a really good um, episode about like dealing with narcissists, um, like the dark triad traits, basically, so yeah, like yeah. Machiavellianism, uh, all that kind of stuff, and um, yeah, he has some really good strategies about dealing with people in a workplace environment that like are narcissists or clearly are if you think they're a narcissist, whatever. Um, and then also, I think he does talk about like energy vampirism too. So I think it's it's kind of in that same vein. Just to you know, if you guys want to pop over to his channel, it's uh, Dr. Todd Grande. Um, so maybe we can link him or whatever. But yeah, it's it's a related topic, and he's really good. I mean, it, you know, from a licensed therapist to kind of be, and he takes on like really like he'll he'll dissect and do personality, um, personality like descriptions on like fictional characters, like he did with Michael Scott, Dwight Dwight Schrute. Like he's done fictional characters and stuff like that oh, from you know popular I think shows. He sent me a video one time of that. Yeah. Yeah, and he's just, uh, you know, he's he's pretty monotone and very straightforward. So, you know, and he throws in this weird so sense of humor. Monotone. Exactly, and it, it feels very legitimate. So, uh, but no, he has a lot of good <laughs> advice. Legitimate. Yeah. <laughs> See, I don't know if he's a real doctor, but it sure feels like it. <laughs> yeah, he, he definitely gives off the vibe. No, um, yeah, he is he is a licensed uh, practitioner. But, um, yeah, no, he... Uh, I think it's just a it, it's a good one. That specific episode is really good, and it ties into what we're talking about. So, we'll put the, uh, the link just good in the advice. And then we'll yeah, definitely. That part in an Instagram post. If he's got an IG, we can tag him. But maybe he'll share. Our I think so. Be like, wow, that was a good one. Greg talked. Hopefully, no. <laughs> he's gonna do commentary on our issue on our episode and be like. These guys got it all wrong. Yeah, these guys have problems. <laughs> this one guy just started. He just started talking about his, his coworker for like thirty minutes. Jeez. Was it really that long? Jeez. <laughs> I'm just joking. So anyway, um, we gotta throw our mentions in real quick. Um, oh yeah, wait, yeah, t-shirt, you got it. It's you. You're wearing it. Yeah, yeah. He's Show got it a t-shirt. Pick up, Show pick up this <laughs> awesome indie revolution uh, t-shirt at uh, Sierra Nova Comics, the Who merch store, it? the indie store. I actually designed it, so that was cool. Based on you know things that you guys had already you know made for the indie revolution, so it was just basically like a revamp. Uh, but yeah, super cool. Feels nice. I think the uh, like the uh, screen that they used was really good. Like it, it, it's not like where it's it's like thick over it, and then when oh, you wash it yeah. or dry clean it, it's gonna like come off like it's a sticker. So it feels like it's ingrained into the shirt, which is always good. So very high quality. Awesome. Maybe I'll I'll take oh, some pictures. I'll model it. I'm just <laughs> bust out one of these, one of those. One Plus of, we got mugs. Got one of these. We got mugs, baby. Yeah, control. breakfast talk mugs. I'm, I'm going to try and design us like uh, just a – not like it doesn't have the logo in it or anything like that. It would just be like a, a picture that will represent breakfast talk. And I was thinking about having like a cat with like an open mouth, just like, breakfast talk. Yeah, but like a real cat. It's going to look like a real cat. Oh. Yeah, not like a, lo- a vectorized version. Nice. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, and then uh, the Comic-Con. We have a three-day uh, Comic-Con that's starting. Virtual. Uh, virtual. Virtual Comic-Con, virtual, obviously. Obviously. You don't get the in COVID. These days, in, in these days. Um, yeah, that's happening Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, so how about instead of going out to Best Buy, you could just sit at home and watch us sell stuff. You could do both. Friday. Or you could do, you both. do both. You could first go get a TV. Yeah. $10. Oh, oh, no, no. Go get a computer. Oh, and there you go. Watch a stream. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah, we should get a sponsor. Where's Best Buy? Sponsor. <laughs> <And> exactly. <laughs> Nintendo, give me free things. <laughs> um, yeah. So if you want to have a panel of your own on there, um, or just or a showcase know, of something. Yeah. yeah. Just, you know. I would try to do cosplayers, but I don't know what I would do for cosplayers on like, there. Like, like a like a like a runway. Could do yeah. That. What if it was like they they show off all their different cosplays? So like they come back periodically. And it's like little segments. Or it's like yeah. I could could probably do that. But I only put know on one a, person like, that would put probably on a lazy do that. Season and just like have someone rotate it. 
<laughs> I only know like one or two people that might be able to like be cosplayers for that. I I know of one person that I could probably and and you know, I don't up. and I don't like I don't even know if she like knows indie stuff. I I bet Greg would be top. I will not do that. No. <laughs> he'll, he'll he'll be Jessica Rabbit. There you go. <laughs> I could see that, Greg. I could totally see that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, and the other thing, uh, right before, you, right after you, I think it was right after you left uh, last episode. Hector, the uh, the other thing we were talking about too was uh, maybe even doing like a live band or something like that. If there's some bands we can get to. You know, we That'd be sweet. Over to them and have them They've perform. already been doing that, like on Twitch and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that'd be kind of cool to get them to perform. Yeah, you know, it's a three day thing. We can get a, maybe a couple of them. Yeah, that's dope. Get some of your MC buddies, man. Well, I, I, have a, I have a band in mind I want to chat with and maybe have them do it. I can also Epic. get um, Mike Lanny. Lanny? Yeah, Lanny. Yeah, yeah. He, Zanny. Was, he was one of our um, um, podcast guests. I'm trying to get every guest that was on our podcast actually to be on. If that's possible, I know Thanksgiving it's weekend is like... it better be possible. <laughs> tell, your that, you know, tell your family they're not that. <laughs> <laughs> tell them they're a bunch of energy vampires. <laughs> Sunday is like gonna be crazy though, because we're gonna be doing a live breakfast talk, and that's um, going to be episode 18. <sighs> we are going to be drinking and celebrating the Hanukkah? festives of the holidays <laughs> we're gonna be so festively drunk yes nobody's seen me drunk well they've both never seen me drunk and uh yeah she'll be witness to that so i want a santa Nova hat you can i can make that there's also uh tree skirts and there's um ornaments and yeah there's a lot of uh, stockings trees don't wear skirts <laughs> i'm a tree Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to stop recording. What is that? That is the what sip. Is <laughs> <laughs> the sip of destiny. Hector oh. just leaving us hanging here. Who? Where? What? Where? Did you already start? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Give me like a countdown or something, oh, man. You guys yeah. gotta like let me know. 